Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today we're going to have an exciting video and it's going to be all about my Kubota Z482 diesel engine. It's a two cylinder diesel and uh, years ago I bought two of these long blocks and built them up myself. One I turned into a diesel log splitter. At the end of the video I'll put one of them boxes up here and uh, you can take a look at that video if you want to see how it runs a diesel log splitter. But today, well, <coughs> going to be using this, my jump pack, to uh, start it with, and uh, I believe that you can just leave this plugged in, no problem. It's not a lithium battery in here, this is a regular lead acid battery, so the battery clips on the back there, I can just leave it plugged in. I don't need a battery for this, I can just start it right off of the jump pack, and uh, I don't believe they'll, uh, it'll do any damage at all. So uh, then, I'm going to use some fogging oil. Now. I'm going to have to get my wife to come out and help me because if you try and uh, use fogging oil on a diesel engine while it's running, it'll just run off the fogging oil. So you have to spray it in until it starts to, it'll pick up speed, then it'll start to die, and that's when you turn the ignition key off, and uh, it'll suck in all this and uh, seal up the uh, combustion chamber because that's the only way. No spark plugs on a diesel, right? So you just can't take any plugs out and pour oil in there. And uh, then I'll use my trusty meter here just to uh, make sure that uh, it's charging. So let's get out to the uh, diesel uh, engine and uh, let's see how this starts. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, it's behind that green tarp there. And uh, got everything piled around it, the wheelbarrow and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, uh, all the tarping off and then I'll bring you back. And maybe I could just slide it out a little bit over here and then uh, I'm gonna start it. Okay, there it is right there, and uh, doesn't look like any vermin's been around. You can see I got spaces on both sides here. Well, I filled it with wire, so nothing could get in there. Then I tightened it all good around the bottom, so yeah, no vermin's been in here or anything. So let's go around the uh, front side and take a look. Well, there we go right there. Everything looks good. There's the spot for the battery. Here's the two battery cables. And... Uh, Ran dry November 23rd, 2019. Okay, so, well, this is going to be interesting. I didn't think it was stored that long, but I guess it is, because I like to leave a note for everything. So, what I'm going to do is I got to take this top off, and, uh, and then we'll put some diesel fuel inside. Now if you just take a look right there at the filter, I'm going to have to empty that out because I guess that just drained down from the, from the lines that were in there that little bit. So I'm going to drain that out and then we'll put some diesel in and then we'll start it up. So that'll be the first time since 2019. Okay so I got some diesel fuel here and uh, I got my jump pack all hooked up, ready to go. I got the ignition key in. All ready to go, and let's just take a look here and see how many hours is on that. Looks like about, looks like 57 hours. Okay, now there's something else I noticed here, right on the cap. And it says, alternator belt loose. Okay, so I guess I had left it loose. But I checked it, the bolt's tight and everything's tight, so we're going to give her a spin and see because I really, I really can't see where it's that loose. If we just take a look here, here's the alternator here, that bolt is tight, this ain't going nowhere. I felt the belt, it doesn't seem that loose. I probably just took the tension off it. So I got everything all hooked up, the mufflers on there, and uh, I reattached, this is the uh, the air intake, goes to here, and that's like a K&N filter for a 5.9 Cummings, so it's got lots of, uh, lots of uh, air filtration, and this is my homemade throttle right here, and there's, you're going to watch, you see uh, the diesel fuel is going to go in there, that's the filter, and uh, this over here is something to explain. This is not an alternator, it's a, 
it's a dynamo so it only puts out AC voltage then it goes through here and it converts it into DC and uh, charges your battery now it's a very low charging system maybe uh, somewhere around 10 to 15 amps tops so I think it should be fine hooked up to the uh, cables of the battery booster it's just not a lithium battery in there it's just a regular lead acid battery so I really can't see the difference and uh, I'm going to double check the oil and you can see where I sprayed everything down so it didn't rust and that's a whole bunch of that uh, that uh, rust proofing spray right there just dripping down off the block so let's put the diesel fuel in and uh, this here says new coolant 2015 <laughs> so let's put some diesel in and crank her over and see how she's going to start okay so you watch at that particular filter spot and you'll see the fuel going in and I'm going to put some diesel in I'm probably going to put maybe like a half a quart there you go it's starting to come in now There. So this is the uh, fuel shut off here. So I got it on the on position. So it's all filled up now. And uh, to get this started, you have to prime it. So we'll go to that next. Okay, so what you're looking at right there is uh, the priming nut on the side of the injection pump. And uh, all you have to do is just kind of crack it loose. And when the engine goes to start up, which it probably won't, it's going to leak some fuel out there and that's just to get the air out. And then once you get all the air out, then you can uh, close the nut and it'll just keep running. So let's get to the starting next. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is got to turn the booster pack on. So I'll turn the booster pack on. And then got to turn the ignition to just on. And I'm not going to worry about the glow plugs or anything else because uh, uh, for now I just want to turn it over just to uh, bleed the air out of the system. So I can stand up over here and take a look and see. What I got to do I think is clean up one of the terminals there because that should be turning over a lot better than what it is and then I'll uh, I'll bring you back okay I move you to the back end there so you can see more and uh, we'll just try this again okay so this is plan B as you can see before them little terminals when I had them tightened on my uh, battery battery fits right in here it would crank over huge but with just the battery clips just sitting on the end of them little terminals there, it's not getting a good contact. So I thought I'd rig this up here. And this would be a lot better so that, you know, the booster cable can go around here and give a good boost. Compared to, uh, you know, just trying to grab on to, like, maybe, you know, just a quarter of that. So the voltage loss was just huge. I mean, this should crank over a lot better than that. So, uh... Let's try this again. Okay, you ready? Oh, she's gonna go. Just open the bleed valve a bit more. Still bubbles coming out, so what I'll do is I'll turn the beef bleed valve back in okay this bleeding might take a little bit try this again okay I think that might do it let's see if it'll keep going now
do you think? That wasn't too bad. A uh, little bit of a struggle there with the voltage drop. And you could see them small little uh, eyelets I had on there that I had, you know, bolted with a nut and bolt onto a battery. Well, yeah, you have no problem uh, with having a good contact. But with them alligator clips, nah, it wasn't getting a good enough contact. Far too much voltage drop. So as I start turning that over and it's going, eh, eh, I knew there was a problem. So I rectified it there and in the future I'll have no problem with the jump pack. And that's pretty much it, the video for the uh, storage of the uh, diesel engine. I don't know how many more years I'm going to go now before I try it again. But uh, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that engine. But I'm eventually planning on doing something with it. I don't know what. But uh, usually when I buy something, I buy something in twos. And uh, sometimes I get stuck with the second one. So thanks for joining me here today. Uh, if you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back again. Let's have some more fun doing some unique things. And some unique ways that maybe you haven't seen before and you find unique too. Cheers.